Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this um, special presentation uh, by BYOB website and DIY Themes. Uh, Chris Pearson, the author of Thesis, uh, is going to be presenting the latest DIY Themes uh, skin to us, and that is uh, Fectus. Okay, so, hey, good morning, Chris. How you doing? Hey, hey, doing great, thanks. Good. So, show us Effectus. All right, so uh, so while he's getting that, what I want to do is show everybody the new skin, of course, but uh, I'd, I'm also going to kind of walk through some of the, the thesis options pages and whatnot that are common to all skins. And so hopefully you'll get a good idea of just how thesis skins and the whole thesis system works, uh, in addition to getting a good idea of, of the new skin and how it works. So, uh, all of our, you know, one of the big ideas behind Thesis 2 was that all the skins, all the designs for it would all work in a very similar manner. So if you learn how to use one, you'll have a good idea of how to use other ones, which is not really the case with WordPress themes. You know, each one is totally different from the others. Well, the idea with Thesis and skins is that you have a really good understanding of all of them when you learn how to use one of them. So anyhow, let's get started here. Uh, this is just a look at the default design for Effectus. I have not done anything here except pick a navigation menu. Uh, it starts off as a two-column layout. Got this interesting thing called an action box up here. And uh, no frills, really. Um, it's just, just the default design. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the thesis dashboard here. And you've got the skin menu, and this is how you control your skins. And first, we're going to look at the design options for the Effectus skin. And we're actually going to be doing some flipping back and forth because some of the options play off one another. So, uh, but the first thing we're going to look at is the site layout options for this skin. So as I mentioned, the Effectus skin has a two-column design. And most of our other skins right now uh, that we've offered to this point have two-column designs as well. A lot of people want a one-column design, a lot of people want a three-column design, and uh, if you're a long-time user of Thesis, you may be aware that the old Thesis was able to do one, two, or three-column designs. Uh, a lot of people like that, and we have brought that feature back in Effectus. Uh, it has options to have one, two, or three-column designs in whatever layout you prefer. In addition, we have included some very simple options that perform the most common design-related tasks that people request. So uh, first, I'll change this guy to a three-column layout. I'll change some, uh, some of the settings here. I'm going to leave everything else alone as it is, and we'll take a look at what that looks like. So now we've got a three-column layout with content in the middle, and uh, I've made the columns different widths than they are by default. So there's that. That's nice. That was easy. But another thing that people want to do is they want to move the navigation menu above the header. Um, it's a pretty easy task with Thesis 2, but it's really easy with Effectus because you've just got this simple option to move it above the header, and boom. So that obviously uh, is super simple yeah. and just an easy way to move, you know, change your navigation menu location, make your site look a little different than everybody else's. And does the menu, uh, is the menu actually centered in that space? Looks like it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It will remain centered. Uh, we've got some, I think some simple tutorials for making it not centered. If that's what you like, you can actually make the header alignment left or right, for example, depending on the site you have. Oh, it actually moves the navigation unit as well. I didn't even know it did that. So that's super handy. Um, Sorry. All right, so why would you ever want to change your uh, alignment here? Well, for if you're a typography freak like me and you have a two-column layout with content on the left, you may really appreciate this left side anchor over here mm -hmm. on your design. You could change the action box to be aligned left as well. We're not going to do that yet. But uh, bottom line, you have a lot of options there for how you present your site. Um, another thing that I want to show you guys uh, are these these skin modes, and really these are just design modes. They're they're things that you might want to do with your design that would actually take a lot of custom CSS to achieve a very what seems like a very simple result. Um, so we'll switch this back to three columns real quick. 
put that in the center and I just want to show you what I'm going to do here. So if we look at the navigation menu, it has a, a, a color background behind it. Well, maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want it to be white. Well, the, or, you know, it, it, actually it will assume the color of the background of the site. But uh, so we can select colorless nav mode and that is going to take that background right off of there. And so now you've got a clean navigation unit if you want your site just to be as clean as possible, that's the easiest, quickest way to do that. So that's kind of neat. That's a highly requested feature on some of our other skins, believe it or not. We've also got this idea of full width mode. And it's really two operational settings. It probably, probably should be a radio button input that says either full width mode or fixed width mode. Right now we're in full width. And what that means is that the units on the page take up the entire width, available width of the browser window. Uh, if we deselect that and therefore change it to fixed width mode, we actually constrain the width of the site uh, to whatever the total width of our columns is. Mm -hmm. This is actually how Thesis 1 uh, it used to operate. It used to give you a, a setting for full width or fixed width layouts. Mm -hmm. um, this achieves that with a, a single click, which is quite nice. Uh, this enables you to use the design options to achieve vastly different outcomes with very little input. So we'll mess around with that in just a second, but that's interesting to know there. And then we've got borderless mode and footerless mode, which are pretty easy to figure out. Borderless mode removes interior layout borders like this one and these guys. So those are gone, one click. And then footerless mode, of course, removes the site footer. Maybe you don't want that, maybe you just want articles on your site is a very easy way to achieve that. Before you go on, can you, um, a number of people have asked to see some of these things demonstrated in the smaller screen view. Can you, um, oh, of course, can of you course. bring it up like in, um, well, I can just constrain this guy. Mm -hmm. So that would be a, a mobile setting, the menu. Well, very simple operation there. Uh, tap, you know, on a mobile device, tap to show the menu, tap to reveal. You know, pretty standard stuff there on the way down. Uh, post images, uh, WordPress post images that you have on your layout, they will assume the full width of the mobile window, which looks pretty cool above your articles. Without any um, padding or margin. That's correct. Yeah, yeah no, that does look cool. I like that. It'll reach the edges of the screen. So. Uh, Real quick, before we go any further, and if you want to test any of these things in Effectus and see what they look like for yourself, you can go to DIYThemes.com slash demo, select the Effectus skin, and you can, so all these pages on the demo site have been designed so that you can explore the skin to the maximum. So for example, you could go to, uh, let's see, we could do styles, click on the styles link, and the articles that come up You've got see the skins, text styles, image and caption styles, and code and pre-formatted code output. So just open any of these posts and then play with your browser window and then you can see what stuff's going to look like on various devices. And there's, you know, this is a pretty comprehensive demonstration here on this site, all the various options that you have for your formatting and stuff. And you can see them all in action there. So that's, a, that's the best way to do that. Anyhow, we'll go back to our little test site here. We're fooling around. So we're using a fixed width layout right now. And I just want to do a couple of quick design changes to show you what you can do very quickly. We're going to put take off that. We'll take off that. We'll take off that. We're just going to do normal stuff here with a fixed width layout. We're going to change our primary font because why not? Uh, I don't even know what some of these are. We'll go with that. And then we've got our color schemes. This is not, this doesn't work the same way as uh, the color scheme picker in, for example, the classic responsive skin. That used a technology that I built called the uh, color scale technology. This is a little bit different. Um, in the personified skin, I came up with a new uh, color technology that basically lets you choose an input color, a primary input color, and it creates the rest of the colors for use in your layout. So you only have to select one thing and then everything else kind of falls out from that. So for example, we'll choose uh, our primary color. Let's make it a nice little blue there. 
and we'll take a look at our current changes. So the primary color is now blue. The orange is the automatically selected complement uh, that is chosen algorithmically by the uh, design functionality of this skin. So this is a, a perfect color complement, 180 degree color complement for any color nerds out there to the blue input color that you selected. Uh, that's pretty handy. Obviously things like this hover color and the navigation menu, this bottom border color, all this stuff is based on that one input color you selected. So there's actually really a whole lot of stuff going on there, but you only had to make one selection. So that's really nice, but maybe you want total control over the colors in your layout. We still have that. Uh, you could say you pick the secondary color and then you, you can make it whatever you want. Maybe you don't like that orange, maybe you want something you know, maybe you want something more like a brick red, something like that. You could choose that on your own, and then the orange stuff changes to your red. And, and you know, in that red color you selected, you'll notice various shades of the red being employed throughout the site as well. So whatever color you select there, it's still making a bunch of smart uh, modifications and, and choices for you based on what you input. So that's, that's really cool, I think. Uh, there's a lot of power there in a very deceptively simple package. We're going to go back to our complementary color mode, just for kicks. You have total control over the action box. You may have noticed that it was still red here. Looks good with the red button, looks not so good with the orange button. So you can tweak that to look however you want. In addition, you can control what happens there. Uh, you, can, you can do whatever you want. You can upload an image, you can change that color. So you're not stuck with uh, what you see there. You have quite a bit of customization flexibility. Would you explain what you mean by background image type cover? Uh, so this is actually kind of a, a CSS thing. You can choose cover or tile. A tiled image is going to repeat. A covered image is going to be stretched to fill the available space without repeating. Uh, so I'll throw some examples up of that in just a second. First, uh, I'll choose a background image. So for the site, we're using a fixed width layout. Well, all this stuff out here is considered the background of the site. All the stuff outside the, the area where there's content and design stuff. So that's the background of the site. Many people want to include an image back there or uh, you know, color, whatever, whatever they want to do. Um, you could change the color by doing something like this. So that changes the color. Uh, obviously, that doesn't look too too pretty right now, but just to let you know, you can you can wrap it all the way around there. And then let's say maybe you actually wanted to do a color or do an image instead. So this is my dusty background image. Uh, it is a transparent image, so I want it to look kind of brown dusty. So I'll do that. So I changed the color. I added this image. We'll save it. And now we've got this kind of dusty uh, background look on the site that looks a little bit better for what we have. Not perfect, but that just shows you that you can do that. You can add a, a non-pattern image. You could add like a photograph that you took if you wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, it, anything like that that you want to do is totally fun. For the action box, which is this guy, this now doesn't look so good, but we have total customization control there. We can make the font color white. We can add an image, such as this chalkboard, and we can save it, and now we're going to have a much better looking action box for our site. That's really cool. So a lot of, lot of customization power there. We changed the font as well. We did that earlier. Um, so you can see you have a whole lot of stuff you can do to achieve different looks from a very simple base of options. We'll move the navigation menu back to where it was. And boom, now that is pretty cool. Okay, so there's a, a quick overview of the design options. You can achieve a whole lot of outcomes with a very limited set of options, which is quite nice, no code needed. Uh, so that gets you really far without needing to resort to custom code, which I think is, is pretty handy.